Demonstrations are one of the most important part of a coach's communication. We all know that players learn most by watching and therefore demonstrations are a really important part of our coach's toolkit. I'm going to give you some of my favourite top tips to make sure your demonstrations are of the highest quality. Top tip number one is to give yourself time to plan and prepare your demonstration. At the end of your drill, there are probably going to be balls around the court. So go and ask your players to pick up all the balls and to put them back in your trolley. And use that 30 seconds to think about what you're going to say to them next, what you're going to show them next, and crucially, where you're going to do it from. So use that ball collection time or the time that the players have between drills to get a drink to plan and prepare your demonstration. Top tip number two. This is really simple but really effective. When you're giving a demonstration, you want the players to be able to see and to be in the best place to see exactly what it is you want to show them. So here's the simple tip. Always make sure that your racket is between you, the coach, and your group of players that are watching. So if I'm demonstrating a backhand from the baseline, I want to make sure that my racket is between me and my group of players. And if you're demonstrating a forehand, again, make sure that your racket is between you and your players so that they can see the best picture of your forehand. Top tip number three is to always demonstrate from where the shot would be played on the court. So it's really important that as part of your preparation for the demonstration that you're really clear what the tactical situation is and where that shot that you're demonstrating would be played from on the court. Here are a few examples. First of all, if you're playing a backhand at the baseline, then make sure that you are on the baseline demonstrating that backhand. If you're playing a wide backhand, then make sure that you are in a wide position at the baseline. If you're demonstrating a deep defensive backhand, then again, make sure that you put yourself in the position from where the players would play that shot in a live situation. If you're playing a backhand volley, then make sure that you move up the court and you position yourself exactly where you would want the players to play that volley from. Whether it's a finishing volley perhaps a little closer to the net or a transition or building volley a little bit further back, make sure that you position yourself exactly where you would want those players to play that shot in a live situation. Top tip number four. When we're demonstrating, we're not just showing the technique, but we're actually showing the players what we want the outcome to be as well. So it's really important that we don't just shadow our demonstrations, but that we actually hit a live ball. And the benefit of that is that the players can not just see the technique that you're using to hit the ball, but they can also see the trajectory of the ball, they can see potentially the spin that you would want them to put on the ball, and you can see where the ball is bouncing in the opponent's court. So you're not just demonstrating your technique, you're demonstrating ball characteristics, you're demonstrating flight path, you're demonstrating the impact on the opponent of the ball that you're demonstrating. So just to repeat, always make sure that you demonstrate with a live ball so that you can show the players not just the technique, but also what you want the outcome to be. Here's a really good example of Coach Richard using a live ball with his players, which shows you exactly what I mean. Okay, right, so lots of really good things happen on the forehand. Um, when we played points, I thought a lot of the balls were landing pretty short. So the problem with landing the ball short is our players can attack us. So what we're going to, to really look to do is to keep the ball nice and deep. So the way we're going to do that is by making sure our racket swings from more low to high. So if you look at the racket here, the racket starts low and finishes high. So watch again, the racket starts low and finishes high. Both of those balls have gone past the service line, which is where we're looking to get the ball. So watch again, from low to high. That was a, a slightly lower follow through. So I'm really looking to get that racket nice and high on the, on the, on the follow through. So Maya, could you just nip down there for me, please? And have you just grab yourself three balls? Here you go, Maya. Okay, just come to net. So, uh, feed me the ball, please, and watch, really concentrate on that racket swinging from low to high. Watch. From low to high. And you can see how the ball travels to the back of the court. Again. 
So the racket swings from low to high and the ball goes to the back of the court.